Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. I want to do a dive into some totals here, okay, and understanding totals and some of the key things around why your totals may be incorrect and just a simple way that you could potentially fix it, okay? There is, there, there's, there's no sort of one way to fix all total issues, but the key thing for me is to just understand why your total is incorrect. That's the key thing, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to work up an example and then I'm going to show you a really quick fix that you could implement um, to actually get the total correct, okay? So what I want to do as I want to work out something a little bit more advanced, I want to see how many sales we're making from our top three customers, right? And so I still want it to be able to hold all, any sort of filtering I put on. So you'll see here I'm selected on this particular state here and my, um, my table is being filtered by that particular state. This is California. Um, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if, it, if it's on or off. Um, I want to see how many of these product sales, because this is this is currently showing all of my sales in this particular time frame. I want to see how many of these sales are from my top three customers only. Okay. And so to do that, I can create another measure. And this is a good um, this is a good revision on on how to do some some ranking calculations as well. And say I'm going to say top three customer sales like this. Okay. And then I'm going to go calculate because I still want to calculate up my total revenue, right? That's the key thing. Calculate enables you to change the context of the calculation. But I want to change the context up by only looking at the top three. And I can do that with top end, right? Top end enables me to create a virtual table or additional context inside of calculate based on a ranking. So I'm going to go um, customers. I'm just going to go values here because I just, just out of habit, but you don't need to do values in this case just because the customer name is the most granular um, column in that table. Okay, so, but uh, it's always, I like to use values. Um, it's just just the, just the way I like to write things out. It makes it easier for me to understand what's going on. Um, okay, so I've got um, uh, customers and then I'm going to go total revenue. I want to I wanna actually only look at my top three customers per by revenue per product, okay? And then I'm gonna go descending, and then I'm gonna go enter, okay? And I'll bring this in. Okay, so I'll, I'll actually unclick it a little bit because it's probably only like one customer per, per product, for example, um, in that data set. But you see here now, when nothing is selected here, we have a much, much, much larger data set, right? So there's obviously a lot of customers buying each individual product. And so now we're seeing a breakdown, right, of how many of our, for every single product, we then are creating a, are looking at our, all of our customers, but then only looking at the top three. That's what this particular formula does for us, right? It enables us to just narrow in on the top three of those customers based on revenue, and then we count up the revenues of those three customers. Okay, now this is where the issue is, right? Or it, totally, it actually depends, right? It depends what you want to show, okay? In this particular case, right, we've got 555,000, okay? What is that doing? Well, in the totals, right, there is no context at all from product, right? There's no context coming from product. There's, there's no context at all. In, 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 you know, in, um, not one little bit of context coming from the table. And that's the case with any total, right? Because you've got to remember within a table, each different product is creating context. But when we get to the total, there's nothing. All of all of the products are included. And so what's happening is this particular formula is now just going and looking for the top three customers overall, regardless of product. It's looking at it and finding just those top three customers and then calculating up, um, uh, ranking them based on revenue and then counting up the revenue of those top three. Okay, so this particular result here is showing the top three customers overall. Okay, but what if we actually want to count up how many of our sales come from our top three customers across all of our products? So basically counting up all of these individual items, that's what we want to be in the total. Okay, that's, this is where it can become a little bit tricky. Okay, now I'm going to show you probably the simplest way to solve this, okay? And sometimes this is this is how I would generally do it, okay? Sometimes you can create it in one formula, but I'm going to create another measure here and I'm going to show you how to solve it, okay? So I'm going to go new measure. I 
Okay, let's start again. I've got a new measure. Okay, and then I'm going to go top, um, top three um, customer sales fix. Okay, so it's just a just a random name. You probably want to random, name these a little bit better. Um, then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to go sum x. Okay. Within this particular table, though, where, where we can put a table, right? I'm going to create a virtual table, and I'm going to use the, the function summarize, and I'm going to go um, products, then by products names, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, an additional column in this virtual table called top three, okay? And then I'm going to reference that prior formula that we just created, okay? Then with in the sum x, what I want to do at every single row of this virtual table, all I want to do is save this result into memory and then go and sum it up at the end. Okay. Now, what this is essentially doing, right? What this is, what this part of the formula is essentially doing, is it's rebuilding this particular table virtually for us, right? It's rebuilding it, and what's going to happen is that because this is rebuilt as per the um, the top three sales, well, what's going to happen is that this this particular um, result here at every single row in the to so in the total we're going to have to iterate through every single product, right? Because remember, there's no context from from each individual product. So in the total here, we're going to go through every single product and then uh, find out what that top three sales was, go and save that result into memory with this referencing here, and then we're going to go through every single product and at the end we're going to go sum them all up, okay? And then we're just going to go enter. And then I'll bring this into my table here. Okay, now check that out. You see here that the total is very, very different. It's now 51 million, okay? And, and intuitively now this looks a little bit more correct, right? Because you've got to see over here like 406 down to 164. Now why it works on every single row? Because you've got to remember that the on in every single row in our table here, in every single row in our table, we have some context coming from product, right? And so this particular formula here is going to filter for only this virtual table is only going to filter is going to filter for one row for every single result. So that's why we get exactly the same result between the initial formula and then this formula because this essentially is calculating the same thing because this is being filtered for one for just every single product individually. But it solves the total for us because the total doesn't have any context, so we need to be able to iterate through and go and run this calculation to every single row and then go and sum them all up. Okay, so that's all I wanted to cover there. There's a little bit um, of you know, theoretical stuff there, but hopefully I've shown you a quick way that you might be able to fix some of your totals if you have some sort of um, complex logic, right? There is some, there are more complex ways to do this in one formula, but I just wanted to show you another way. I've shown this, I've shown how to solve totals in, 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 in a few videos now, and so this is just another way that you can do it. And then what you might want to do is you could potentially go intermediary, you know, intermediary step. You could you could call it intermediary step, and then this could be your, um, this one here could be your proper one. This this fixed one could actually be your, your actual. This is just a quick way to get more advanced calculations, right? And then potentially... You know, you don't actually you don't actually need this particular formula in there. Um, you know, you can just use that one in there. And then what I would probably do here is I might even hide I might even hide this formula because you know it's just an intermediary step. It's not really that important. So there's lots of lots of really cool ways that you can you know play around with how your model is set up. You know, especially when you're branching out into these more more complex calcs. But hopefully hopefully you know you got a little bit out of that around some of the the techniques for total solving totals here and understanding totals that's what this video is all about okay so hopefully you enjoy this one um definitely throw the video a like if you got a lot out of it and don't forget to subscribe to enterprise dna tv um plenty of of great content coming out to you so so looking forward uh, to enabling um and publishing those and um and getting getting you to view them okay all the very best and talk to you very soon